What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. By goal. I pronounce you. By wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Well, I almost said it's Friday, and guess what? It's not. You can tell that I'm on top of things, and it's the middle of the day. Hi, kids. Um, obviously, I'm very excited because I get back-to-back New York City musicians in two different days, so that totally jazzes me up. But before we get to Matt, because I know that he's on the line and he's holding, we don't want to keep him waiting too long. Two quick things that I wanted to mention really fast. I want to remind everybody, and I know it's last minute, but I am doing a show tomorrow at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time from an undisclosed location. That's for you guys to figure out what state I'm in. In any case, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time tomorrow, I will be hosting Laura with the Starkist Tuna Company, and I'm very excited, and I know that you guys are thinking, why is she doing the food thing? But I listed this all out nicely on Facebook for you so you can see. 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. Also confirmed today, George Christie's interview will be September 15th, which is, of course, we all know, the History Channel outlaw himself will be on the show up to two hours, and I'm very, very excited to be hosting him. The last thing I wanted to mention is my dear friend, Courtney Rashawn, um, celebrity makeup artist, is actually having her book launched this evening. So if any of you happen to be out and about in the New York City area, Area. It's being held at the PhD Rooftop Lounge that's located at 355 West 16th Street in New York, New York. And of course, this is being sponsored and held by Heather West, which is, of course, West Levy PR. Thanks so much to those guys for being on the show as well. So certainly, if you can make it tonight, it's from 6 to 10 p.m. again at the PhD Rooftop Lounge at Dream Downtown. So without further ado, I don't want to have Matt holding any longer than he has. So let's get him on the line. Let's start talking some music. Hey, guys. Hi, Matt. <laughs> hey, thanks you? for having me. Oh, no, thanks for coming on the show, as a matter of fact. I'm sorry that I had to keep you holding, but we have to do the show business and all this stuff. And it gives me, like, three minutes to stop being nervous because I'm always all good. nervous. when I. Yes, well, you're a New York City musician, and you're, you know, we have this commonality with Bridget O'Brien. So um, she's fabulous. So anytime one of her people comes on the show, I'm, like, automatically jazzed up and excited. And I did all my interview research stuff about you. You're really a big deal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. I think so. so. <laughs> I'm, like, bowing down on the ground right now. Yes, that's, that's right. It's matters. all, Yeah. Yeah, because from what I hear, according to your Facebook, I'm a top-notch interviewer. You gave me a very nice compliment. Thank you so much. That's you nice. are. Um, Thank that's you. that's what I hear. The same about you. Oh, gosh. Well, yes, we're very good friends, and I have a great deal of respect for her. She's in my book. She's an awesome mom, and she's a wonderful mother. So, Bridget O'Brien, because I know she'll be listening to this interview, and maybe, Matt, because you live in New York City and I don't yet, you can kind of nudge at her to take a vacation, a very well-needed vacation soon. I've uh, been on her. I will that. work on that. I will work on that. She, Please. She does – you know, she is busy. She likes to work, and she does a great job. I know. Um, I know she and she's does. one of these – But she's always, like um, – there's very few people that, that have your back entirely in music and, and in t- entertainment in general, I'm sure, as you have figured mm-hmm. that out yourself. And yes, she's I have. And she's one of those people. She's yeah. amazing. I mean, she really is. And and she's on it like 24 seven and I have to nag at her like, okay, you've only been working 10, 12 hours now. Maybe we should like put the pen down and do something <laughs> else. So she's been warned. I'm warning you. You heard me, Bridget. I don't need to say anymore. Um, so there you go. Um, I was just <laughs> listening to your song, which we'll get to because I could listen to awesome. that all day. And that's a really big deal for somebody like myself because I, I, when I write, I'm a professional author. So when I write, I need to have music on that is relaxing sure. to me. That's comfortable to me. You have a very nice boy voice, and that's not meant to insult you. you. What I mean by <laughs> what I mean by the boy voice, ladies and gentlemen, is, and we'll play the song later. Um, it, you're very, it's like if you were on a date, you could listen to you, or if you were uh, a single girl like I am, and listening to this, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, and he's cute, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now you have a cute guy in your ear. I'm like, okay, I hope you're not blushing, but I couldn't help myself. No, well, I'm thank like, you. It, I can it, it say takes, that. It takes a lot to to you know, to get me off the, of my, uh, off my game in that regard. So don't worry ah, about the plug. gotcha. Good deal. Okay. Well, wonderful. Yeah. So I did, and we'll, and we'll talk about the turnaround, obviously, but I, I tend to jump around in my interviews because I think it's important that people realize that Matt is more than just a musician, which you are, obviously you're a regular person, 
Um, so I want to start off a little bit talking about, um, are you aware of the fact that there's more than one of you in the world? Bet you didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm aware of that when I try and create social media. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, Fail. so you know about the CEO. But he, he's, you know, the guys in Colorado, he's the CEO of some company. It sounds like, hey, he's like in really good standing. You're like next to that guy. I, I know. Like, why can't I have some like really cool identity theft thing happen? <laughs> where I like, I'm like the beneficiary of something like that. Oh, no, I totally get what you're talking about. It's funny, too, because when you Google somebody, you never know what you're going to come up with and such. Yeah. Um, so I found out that was rather interesting. And also, I want to clarify this. Are you aware that there are two different websites that you have out there? Because when you put in your name, there's one, and then there's yeah. the other one that comes up. Okay. You, yeah, you are aware yeah, that, that was so, a – yeah, that's like I, – I, I made a really – poor decision in trying to, to design my own website and the ah. previous web web provider the, I've been trying to get this guy to to uh you know to just close that one off but I, I think there's some confusion sure. there so that the the official website is mattcolliganmusic.com that is the up to date okay. one and the one that I will direct everyone to that's kind of what I thought too, but I peeked at both of them obviously just to kind of see the, the similarities and differences and such. And I mean, I don't think it's horrid. I mean, I got information off of it, but I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you want everybody going there and looking at that. Yeah. One, I look like I'm 12 and one, I look like I'm 13. So, <laughs> so <those are> the <laughs> well, you know, you realize you're like 30 something. So it's not like you're in your forties mm-hmm. and aging and graying and maturing and all that good stuff. If any of you folks take a look at him on Facebook, you'll see, I mean, he has, you have a baby face which I'm sure gets you lots of places and lots of gigs. And that's where you say yes, right? I that's hope. right. You don't turn down a gig. Yay! <laughs> that's for darn sure, I have to say. Um, and we have mutual <laughs> friends. Um, have, you, have you played with Edvin Ortega? Because I could see you doing that because I like Edvin um, Ortega's voice. I've heard him perform. I met Edvin. Actually, I met Bridget O'Brien the same night. Um, this was a gig. I think it was, was a, a maybe early last year in 2015 at Webster Hall okay. um, with uh-huh. Jeff Timmons of 98 Degrees. So he was one of ah, the, nice. um, the opening acts. Uh, his band, uh, what was his, uh, his band was, um, he had the, the boy band he was doing. Um, yeah. I wish larger I could than Life the name, tribute band? Yes, Larger Than That's Life, okay. yes. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Bridget represented um, uh, that act as well as maybe one or two others on that bill. So I met all okay. of, I met everybody that night, and it was, you know, so, nice. and here we are. <laughs> well, see, it's all like six degrees of separation, and of course I assume you know, because, you know, Gerard is a friend of the show here. Gerard and I have, I've interviewed Gerard McNamee, Webster, Mr. Webster Hall himself, and Mr. Actor oh, Extraordinaire, wow. and Mr., he's wonderful, absolutely wonderful man. I can't say enough about him. And he's, he's going to be in my calendar, actually, so it's exciting. He was in my book, now he's going to be in my calendar. So I, I love doing you'll find out very quickly that Bridget's clients and myself are just connected and stay connected so I like that so once sure. you're in the circle That's you're awesome. kind of stuck pal so today's it you know you're in for good I'm in the now. nest in the tree of so trust. just get used to it get on the ride and let's be done with that okay <laughs> I want to start talking about and what's and one of the really cool things that you guys orchestrated I know in June that you did like a little mini concert tour so I wanted to ask you how that was um, and how well you were you received because I know even though it's in the city but it's different parts of the city how did that go? Talk to us about constantly playing one night after another night or the four or five nights it was. Um, just talk about that experience, if you would. Well, the, you know, uh, to be honest, it, was, it wasn't like, um, you know, like a planned, like a uh, strategic touring uh, circuit. It was sure. more, you know, I, I, pl- I gig a lot here anyway. I'm gigging uh, during the summer. I'm gigging four nights a week. Um, right. So at that, in, in terms of like the performance aspect, I'll say that when you're playing, um, you know, original music gigs, they're substantially easier than nights where you're playing at a bar or a restaurant and playing three hours sure. solo acoustic. On your voice, it just kicks your ass uh, to sing three <laughs> hours. It just can't be, can't be healthy. Um, so I would say, like, if I'm playing a bunch of gigs back-to-back in the city, typically you're playing 40-minute sets. So it, it's actually much easier to do it that way for me than what I do t- typically throughout the year anyhow. Um, I got you. So, yeah. So, and, and for me, you know, I live just outside of New York city. So for me, um, mm-hmm. you know, the, the biggest pain in the ass is just the fun commute to and from and finding parking. I understand completely. I do. Trust yeah. me. That's why I don't drive there anymore. I made the mistake of driving in the city. Yeah. That's not happening again. People are lethal there. I mean, I love it. I'm going to live there, but I'm like, I could die there. I mean, I could die walking yeah. in your city. Right. You know this. 
And then the, your load okay, in so is fun as a musician in New York. Like it, it's so valuable gigging in, in the city, just from like a, a nostalgia perspective. And just, you know, sure. you're gonna, you know, you're playing with like if you're playing with Bitter End or places like that or pianos. There's you know, you, there's all of the guys you grew up on. You know, at some point played all of those rooms which is awesome. Mm-hmm. But then when you realize oh, that you park and you're loading in your stuff and then you're getting a ticket in your <laughs> car while you're loading your shit in, that's, that's, that's the fun part. Then you forget oh my God, I can only really imagine. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it. Because it's like parking. I don't even know how you figure out the whole parking situation and then try going anywhere in the city where you can even find it. That's, that is insane. And then I'm like, okay, what is he going to do? Get on the subway and like take all your stuff? Can you even do that? I, you know what? I, I, I consider it, um, but I, like if, if for gigs where you have to bring your, your PA and your sound system, it's just not doable. Um, right, it's either, right. It's either I your stuff's going to get jacked or you're just going to be exhausted by the time you play <laughs> or some combination of the I two. I imagine. Well, no kidding, yeah. definitely, which poses the question because I think this is really neat, folks, that are listening in that are not native New Yorkers. One of the cool things is, is that some of the subway stations, you can walk downstairs in, well, Times Square is a perfect example, where you walk downstairs and the musicians are right there. They're literally playing to whomever's walking by, et cetera, whether it's a yeah. full-size band, one person, whatever. I could see you doing that. So that was going to be my question to you was, have you ever done that subway gigging thing? That's a great question. So one of my really good friends, co-writers, collaborators, um, Nicola is, uh, is, is her artist's name. Um, okay. she, you know, she has lots of Broadway experience and, and now she makes a, you know, ultimately a full-time living, um, you know, she teaches music, but she, she busks and, um, there's something like, I don't know, there's something, I guess, like, um, grassroots about it that I really do love, um, that, mm-hmm. it, it, but in New York, it's actually quite competitive. It's not as a, people seem to think that every time you're seeing somebody playing on the subway, I'm saying people from outside of New York seem to have that, this perception that you're likely homeless. <laughs> um, but in New York, you actually have to be licensed um, and go through auditioning, a really uh, intensive audition where they're, I mean, they're turning down people that have, you know, qualified on, you know, all the shows that everybody watches on, whether it's The Voice or American Idol. Right. Um, they're, they're looking for very specific sounds, very unique arrangements, uh, band setups. Um, so I, I likely this year will be auditioning, um, okay. whether I get in or not, it, obviously it's a crap sure. shoot. Um, but I, I would d- definitely do it. I mean, you can, you can make a living doing that. Um, and what's kind of cool about it too is, um, <laughs> which is funny. I, I say this ironically, I wouldn't do it. You could probably play the same freaking song over and over again and nobody knows because it's <laughs> just a passerby. So you could have a oh set list of one or two songs and it's a win. Wow. I, you know, I'm still reeling over this whole, seriously, there's competition to play the subway? A ton. It's really, really competitive. Seriously? Good money oh, my God. Really? I would have never yeah, thought you, that. Am I just naive? Depending on oh what station gosh. you're at. I, I think okay. if you're, I mean, obviously, if you're in New York Penn, I, I mean, you know, you've, you've seen the traffic right. in, that, in that place when you, oh, yeah. you just, you know, right. a, a, a subway door or a train door opens up and, you know, there are all the musicians and everybody drops a dollar. You've, you've got hundreds of people walking by. That is wild. That I guess I never looked it at is. it that way. I mean, I did, you know, you walk out and you listen for a little bit and I'm like, okay. And you drop your thing and you move along. But I suppose if you're sitting there for hours at a time, Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, I didn't think about that. Well, here I thought I had had another gig. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty impressed by, and I am impressed by that. I know that a lot of times people's perception is, oh, if they're playing the subway, they must be homeless or this or this. That's not always the case either. You know, sometimes you just have musicians that want to play, can't find a gig, so they go down yep. to the subway station. Nothing wrong with that. I see no issue with yep. You could play on the street for all I care. I mean, I'm all big on that, but that's me, little art freaky girl. They crack I am. down. Like if, you, if you don't have a permit, they seem to crack down in um, in the city uh, with, with, with people really? who aren't licensed or permitted to play. Yeah. Um, I don't gotcha. know what it is okay. about, you know, I, I don't know how you'd be disturbing somebody with, with music as people walk right? by. But, um, exactly. It's like, that's just a little crazy. Yeah, well, there's a whole lot to not get about that one. That's for darn sure. But okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. um, like, that's now, the worst thing I know, going on in New York. Uh, well, yeah. 
we could go on and on about that one because I'm telling you, there's things that happen. I mean, and the subway is scary. I know that people laugh at me all the time because I've been on the subway a hundred times. First of all, I don't, I don't get the subway. I'm lost all the time. Doesn't seem to matter how many times I think I know where I'm going. I'm always on the wrong damn train going the wrong way, and that's annoying when it's 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. So there's that, and then there's the people that either stare at you or the people that want to kill you or the people that hit on you. So there's like three people on yeah. the subway basically, or and or then there are no children. What's with well, right, and what's with you people not having any kids? That's another thing, because there's, like, there are there are no kids. There doesn't seem to be any kids once I'm in Times Square. I don't see the little people. What's with the little people thing? Help uh, me that's out. That's a good observation. I, I, Thank I'm, you. I, you know, I, I don't know how to answer that for you. That is that is an astute observation, I must say. Seriously, um, just think about that the next time you're out in the city. You're going to be like, seriously, yeah. where are the kids? I think people eat them or something, or, like, it's a zombie thing, where it's, like, only in certain parts of New York City you're going to see kids. That's weird. That's a valid Just hypothesis, saying. the zombie one. Yeah. I think you could do a song about this, Matt. Maybe you should. It's already in the work. Right on the show. It, those, there we go. We just right, just like that, Bridget. See, we got them new songs already. See, my job's done. Those are the ones that kidding. stay in your iPhone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you those can think back. That, yeah, that, that crazy girl, a year ago, she's like, yeah, I did that zombie song, and here he is. Infamous for it. That's right. All on you'll, you'll log that one on your phone, and the next day you're just, what the F did I, did I just <laughs> It was great at some point when I heard <laughs> Was it. I drinking when I did that? You know, exactly. Yeah, no. yeah. Now, I understand you're a native of New Jersey. So, because I, mm-hmm. I know very little about New Jersey, and obviously I know much more about the city. So, a guy from Jersey, um, tell me what the culture, in, you know, New York is so artsy, obviously. You could do just yeah. about anything there, from theater to, to you name it. What is that? What's the culture like there in terms of that? Is it much harder to gig there? Is it much harder to get more established there? Or are you finding you're struggling more so in New York? That's Not that you're struggling really necessarily, question. but everybody struggles, honestly. Yeah, I think New York is a harder gig circuit. And, and I think the, the perception is, is typically, uh, at least when people ask me that question, usually it's, well, New York is, is so competitive, right? I think it's the opposite. I think now – um, you know, people will uh, or booking agents or talent buyers really want to book based on draw. You know, they they're not so mm-hmm. concerned with what your sound is like because they just want you know, they obviously just want to you know fund their restaurant, their business, like they should do. Uh, but with that said, right. I think the in New York there's there's so many people looking for these gigs, and the I think the quality control isn't always <laughs> desirable. And there's so many acts on the bill that it's more of a revolving door. I think New Jersey, sure. I think it, there's less, um, there's less like straight, like um, standard original music venues. But okay. you know, so New Jersey is very strong with the cover gig scene. But with that said, you know, I play a lot of cover gigs, but the cover gigs I found to be um, great for um, original music. Because if you surround okay. songs, you, so New Jersey's got a lot of nice restaurants. Um, especially where I am, where you're, where you're pretty close to the city, you've got a captivated right. dining room or bar area with a song that they're clear with, and then you see one of your songs, and you and I think you, you know, you set that, um, and you do what you're doing, for sure. So New York, at the competitive level, it's always been, there's so much going on at the same time. Jack, real quickly and let you know for some odd reason you completely sounded like you were in a tunnel there for the last two three minutes that you were talking so i couldn't hear okay. anything that you just said um okay try to talk now i just want to make sure that i can hear you yeah are you there okay that's that better okay. a little bit better it, it you kind of you're kind of coming in and out for a second there that's why i guess i'm concerned more so about the audience listening because even if i can't hear you, i want to make sure that they're able to hear you of course sure um 
and one of the other questions that I had relative to location is, is how vital is it, meaning are you a performer that's going to excel at a place like Webster Hall, let's say, because we all know the length of Webster Hall is huge from top to bottom, yeah. versus, let's say, a tavern, you know, like Brightside Tavern, for instance. Um, do you need a smaller um, area in terms of uh, not only the draw that you get, but also the sound effect and such? Does it make a difference for you? Um, I, I think... It's that everything is, although we have an acoustic Oh, now I'm definitely hearing, you're actually getting worse. Oh, no. <laughs> I wonder if maybe you should try to hang up and call me back again and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, do that. All right, I'll wait for you. Just call me right back. Thanks. Okay, kids, we're just going to stay on the air here for a second. As you can tell, if you're listening in, of course, I if I can't hear Matt, you probably can't either. So hopefully with any luck at all, I'm guessing that we're both on cell phones. This is the modern technology downside sometimes when people are using cell phones and the modern technology, these things do happen. So I apologize, um, obviously, to my listening audience, and hopefully we'll be able to clarify this by him calling back in. Let's see. Hopefully this is going to make a difference. Hello? So sorry about that. Is oh, better? okay, much better. Yeah, now I can completely hear you. Okay, so go for it. Um, if you want to address both questions, again, like this way we get an answer. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll, I'll briefly digress back to your initial question about gig in New York and New, versus New Jersey. New Jersey, okay. I, I, I've grown to like New Jersey. There are plenty of artsy places to play. Um, I find like sure. it's, 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 e- it's easier to maintain a, like a, a, an income playing in New Jersey, but they're not traditional oh. original music venues. Um, okay. You know, New York, you're playing, you're playing original music venues, but those places are, you know, don't have much of a budget because their budget's contingent sure. upon what, who you bring or how many people you bring. Um, right. So it's easier to make money, and you can also – a lot of those gigs are cover gigs, but that's not to say you don't play your original music at those cover gigs in New Jersey. Um, gotcha. So I've grown to love it and make pretty, you know, pretty decent income doing it. Um, so then your, your, I'm sorry, your second question, your question thereafter. The second question was, yeah, I, I was just going to say I'll refresh your memory again because I, I always find it interesting to ask a musician like yourself, for instance, because let's say you played Webster Hall, for instance. You've seen the size of it and such. So for a musician like yourself, would it be better for you in terms of not only sound and draw, et cetera, um, to do someplace like Webster Hall? Or are you the type of musician that vocally, et cetera, is going to do better, like it's, let's say, at a Brightside Tavern, you know, that's smaller, more cozy? Um, you know, I, I never really thought about it, to say the truth. It is a, it is a valid question. Um, I, I think when everything, although everything's a kind of acoustic base, you're still only as good as the sound system So and who's okay. operating it. Um, so I, when I play a room like Pianos, which is just an awesome room, the sound guy's amazing, um, That you know, that's a smaller, intimate room. That works extremely well. But then there are times where, um, I think it was two years ago, playing the Paramount, in Long mm-hmm. Island, which is a huge venue. And again, right. the sound guy was amazing. The sound was great. So it sounded good. Um, so I, I think it's more about the sound system than, than the room. Now there are places that I play that have like, you know, that are like big catering hall type places and they've got like pit bull cranking from above. I'm like trying to play acoustic <laughs> guitar here, guys. It's not really working out. Um, so that sucks. Okay. But okay. that's really like the only really uh, real problem. Sure. No, I understand. I do. Um, now, because you make it hard to creep on you, because some people, of course, aren't very public as it relates to a lot of information about yourself, which you're not, by the way. So thanks. Um, that's a little tough. <laughs> and yes, I read the press kit, et cetera, but I'm like, there's just things I want to know. So I'm just going to flat out ask you, obviously. Yeah. Um, Talk to me a little bit. One of the things that Matt has done that I think is really cool is I saw a picture of him, and I'm not sure who the lady was, but you were actually in a classroom setting playing guitar in the classroom along to what would look to be a book reading to children, which I think is amazing, anything with kids. So talk to me how you got involved with that, and is that something that you still do? Because I think that's neat. It's really neat. Uh, I do. So I, um, obviously a separate, you know, whole separate endeavor for me. I'm a behavior analyst during the day, so I, I work with kids with autism. Um, mm-hmm. and that's like a kind of like, a, it's not freelance, but you know, it's a very flexible job and my, you know, I'm married to a special ed teacher. So oftentimes, nice. at least, you know, a couple, a couple times a year, she'll have me come in and play for the kids, read with the kids. Um, and it's fun. So I, I, I'll do that anytime I can. I mean, um, 
you know, like doing any time you get to play music in general, like let alone the, the reading is cool. Spending time with the kids is cool. But any time, just the, the fact that you get paid to make music during a daily basis makes it, I think, much more valu- valuable. And you want to, you know, kind of set kids up when you go and you work with them, expose them to music for opportunities like that when they get older, too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Think it's not just related to kids. Anything with animals, kids. Um, I want to use music especially to help. Um, it's really as simple as that. That is absolutely amazing. I love that. See, and I love the fact that some musicians take their talents to a certain other different areas, go different places, do different things. It's amazing to me. And and the impact, the kids love that. Kids love music. People, I don't think, realize. And that's the next question I want to ask you, especially because your your wife is involved in terms of special ed as a teacher. Um, What is your take in the New York area because in Wisconsin, I can see it every day. There's a decrease in mm-hmm. terms of arts and what they're funding, et cetera. Are you finding that in the city as well, or do you feel that your, your, your city in general, what's happening with this whole decline in arts and wanting to promote? You know, I mean, it, it, it saddens me, to be honest with you, and I guess they talk a lot about that because I'm like, is it a, is it a dying novelty, so to speak, because people treat it as such? Uh, I, I, there's, there's a bunch of moving parts to that. I, I think that um... – the artists that have not yet established a business, although not deliberately, and I don't say this in a disparaging way, I'm just saying this as a cause and effect sure. type um, result here, um, are ultimately um, facilitating like this work for free mentality for artists. Like, why do be- why do venues think that they can get away with asking somebody to come in and work for free, meaning the artist? Because somebody does work for free for them. So, you know, if, if everybody put their foot down and said, no, if you want music, you got to pay for it. I've got a family to feed. Then that is probably less likely to happen. But I think there are always people willing to, sure. you know, work for cheaper or work for nothing that I think, you know, kind of hurts our artistic economy, so to speak. Um, right. And I, I, I agree. I don't know if that's a new thing, um, but uh, but that seems to be. And I also think that of many artists now, I, I think. With you look at um, what PR does, um, you look at like um, if you watch really any genre of music, you would think that the lifestyle is more grandeur and you know it's right. much cooler than it actually is. And I think artists are now exposed to that at an early age and expect that, and then are less willing. Um, uh, again, this is a major generalization, but it's just one of my right. thoughts on it. Um, it's, but that you know they're probably less willing to say, you know what, I'm gonna go play cover gigs. Um, I think I've, I've spoken with a lot of artists where it's like, no, I don't, I don't want to play cover gigs. Well, mm-hmm. you know, that's a, an easy paid practice opportunity to make, make money and put it back in the pot for your original art. Um, so I, I think, you know, without, you've got to be multifaceted doing this. You've got to be able to do your booking, uh, manage good books. I mean, if you're not doing, you know, tax stuff, write-offs, you know, you're in the red really quickly. There's so many um, oh, things sure. that you've got to be able to do. And if you're not equipped and you're just going to go out and play, you know, you probably are going to be a little bit behind in terms of the finances of it and surviving um, than others are. Oh, definitely, without a doubt. And the other thing is people don't seem to realize that, you know, although there seems to be a thousand different musicians doing a thousand different things, they're all very specialized, at least in my opinion. They offer something, Mm -hmm. you offer something that I can't. I don't know how to sing a song. I don't know how to play guitar. I don't know how to do all those things. And it just seems as though people take for granted, well, this guy, you know, stops playing, there'll be another person. You know, there'll be another person. You know what I mean? It's, It's just, to me... It just saddens me. It just it does. It saddens me to say the least that this has just become a dying sort of uh, music and arts are a huge thing, and I don't know why people don't make that a huge thing. But I could go on and on about yeah. that all day long. But we're not going to do that because you know that would just take away your time. So next order of business, I have to ask about this. Um, from what I can see here, it looks like you did not start playing guitar until the age of 16, which I thought was actually interesting. Most musicians are like, oh, I started at age four and I knew I wanted to play right away. Is it me or does that seem a little late in the game? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I never wanted to be like this, like shredding, you know, lead guitar player. Um, so, I mean, my 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 father always played. He was his guitar's line around the house, and I always kind of noodled with them. I never knew what the hell I was okay. doing, and, and never really tried until I was about 16. Um, but you know, my goal. I mean, I've always loved 
the song as a whole. I've never want you know, and I, mm-hmm. even now, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not. I can play acoustic gigs. I can, you know, um, I can hold, the, you know, I can keep a song, but I'm not going to okay. be able to, you know, play, uh, be a lead guitar player. Um, oh. I, I always just <laughs> wanted to write. I always wanted to create okay. music. Um, okay. And so, it, although I started late, I think it serves the purpose for what I need to do. I can, you know, I can do my own tracking, my all my right. uh, recording here without hiring session guys. And, um, you know, so, but will I... You know, will I be the guy at Guitar Center just like, you know, playing these crazy Jamming things up and down? Or, <laughs> yeah, that's that's not me. <laughs> okay, just to clarify, folks, Matt's not gonna, you know, stop writing songs and singing songs. Matt sucks. To become clarify. a professional. That is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I still would have not done that. Now, because of course there's no information anywhere on this, I'm just wondering if you took any classes relative to um, music. Etc. Meaning not only high school, college, etc. Are you planning to do mm-hmm. so in the future if you haven't? Always. I, I think what I do during the day helps. I, I I just love. I'm a huge geek. I love being in school. Love learning. Um, okay. And, the, and I, I always I get anxiety when I'm not doing those things. I always feel like, um, you know, it's always it's always just a dangerous thought to say like I've learned it. I'm, sure. You know, I'm done. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I I've always taken intermittently um all types of um you know voice lessons guitar lessons um i but i I like to like kind of work things out on my own closed door just practice sound like garbage where nobody can hear me (laughs) and then when i hit a wall once i've learned it on my own i say you know what i I just feel like i need to you know get some new information and then i'll go see an instructor and then practice 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 then go for more information so it's incremental in that way but even now, voice, I, I still um, intermittently, um, there's a great, uh, in New Jersey here, and, and New York, there's a great vocal coach and artist mentor, her name is Zook Smith. Um, she, she, I, I still, you know, cons- consult with her. I'll, I'll periodically say, hey, you know, can I come see you? Uh, I want to try and, you know, hit these notes, and I just can't seem to be doing it. Um, so, yeah, always. I think, I'll, and that's, that's, that's that, I can't imagine that ever ending. That's neat. That is so neat. Oh, now I have to ask this question because we have something in common, of course, both of us being writers. So I want you to explain to the listening audience, because some of them are not familiar with writing or even more so non-familiar with music in general. So talk to me a little bit about your particular process. Like, let's say, for instance, you took our little zombie idea and it was a serious idea and you're like, okay, I'm going to make a song out of this. Talk to us a little bit about the process, because I've noticed some musicians are just like, bam, give me one hour. I got it. We're done. Give me a guitar, let me strum a little bit, whatever. Some people are like, okay, I'm going to write it over the course of days. So talk to us a little bit about how you do that. I have this conversation all the time, and it's such a cool conceptual conversation. Um, You know, it's evolved, so I think initially, uh, you know, I didn't didn't have, you know, that much content, you know, early on because you're kind of waiting for, you know, life to dictate that. It's like a reality show where you kind of have to script the reality show because reality is just (laughs) not that exciting ordinarily. Right. Um, right. And it's the same thing. If, if if you're just waiting on inspiration, you're not going to have that much material. So at that point, Amen. you realize that I think I think it's about having systems. Um, okay. So for me, but to, to be precise, so what really what I like to do. Um, uh, so I, I do I do I'm always taking classes for thing. I'm a, I'm a member of a group called Song Students in Nashville, um, which is a really great for um, for song and collaboration for. Um, just making contacts with fellow people. So the input strategies that I'm them I really love is that will provide the help if you need it. Some of them have to. Now, again, the instructor is in the first text. Okay. Right. Now, I'm going to say a 10. I'll work with the best ones. So that's a um, and then there are all four what do I have to say to call this? Um, and I build the voices from there. So the first they're all going to be from the same chords that make them systematic way. Um, and the thing about that, we didn't do that. We do they wind up the same song probably or just get you to that. If you think of, you know, think of um, 
But it's, it's about efficiency. Gotcha. Like you said, you can bag it out in an hour doing something like that. Right. Um, and then, you know, melodically is different. I think melodically, I just keep on going. They just noodle it around or piano or something. I'll just record some melodic things. So keep a rolling notebook in my phone. Because um, those are harder. I, I, those, those, I think, are still, you know, if I didn't have so much back backlog memory in my phone, I, that would be harder to continuously think, just update, you know, uh, in a formulaic way. But the lyrics, I think, it's gotcha. like traditional writing storyboarding. And I'm going to guess that you're the traditional writer in the sense of, and I think we're all kind of the same pigeonholed into this, unfortunately. Have you gone through those ruts? Because I've had ruts for weeks where it's like, I can't write a damn thing. Not one thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or does it not work yeah, like that for musicians? <laughs> it's totally uh, But, you know, I, I've grown to like, um, and this is, uh, I, you know, I wanted to mention Songtown USA. I wasn't looking to obviously harp on them. They're a really great musician. Another thing that I learned from is, even then, I think part of, like, a, like you'd be this way too, where you've got very high standards for yourself. And part of the reason that you don't write during that time is just because not you not to put it right, because anything you write during that time you think is shit. So for for me, you know, really what what I've been advised really works for me is write it any day to get momentum, um, just to avoid that delay, um, and just to get yourself on writing. And it, it'll it'll happen whether part of what you wrote that. Just didn't make the cut. You know, it really wasn't that good. Um, part of it could fit somewhere else. Um, but if nothing else, you've kept your feet. I, I've grown right. into that habit, and that that's just been really helpful to avoid in you know, the traditional writer's thought. Gotcha. Wonderful. See, and and what I what I like about every person's process and how they do it, it's kind of a test. I always find that the way you write or let's say the way you compose something is, is kind of an ex- extension of yourself, if you will, like some of the main components. You can learn a lot about someone's process, I guess, in the long story short, learn a lot about them by the way that they do those things. Just my little 30-second yeah. spiel on that one. Um, now, there's a couple really kick-ass things about you. Oops. I'm sorry about that obscenity, but we are internet radio, so I can get away with that. Um, There's a couple different things about you that I think are absolutely awesome that some of the folks might not know about. For instance, I know, I think it's very cool that you took the proceeds of your song, A New Day, and um, you had opted to donate 100% to, is it Shane? That's the name, Shane Mill, correct? Um, Yes. Okay. Talk to the folks a little bit about what made you decide to do something like that and why it's so significant. And then talk to them, of course, about your inspiration for the song, A New Day. Well, that's an old song. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, but before you start, I have to stop you because you're completely fading out again. Sorry. I don't mean to oh, interrupt sorry. you, but I can't hear you. No, I'll call no, you again. Um, okay. Thank you. Bye. Sure. Bye. Okay, folks, sorry about that. Um, once again, you can see, and I'm sure you can tell if you're listening into the um, interview, and I feel terrible because Matt's such a terrific guy, and I, I don't want you guys to miss anything. So I'm sure it's a little frustrating, um, but things like this I think are important, especially even though this was something that Matt had done being the song a while ago. It's pertinent, and it speaks to the fact that uh, it's so refreshing to see artists and musicians these days doing something that contributes to society, and especially when it helps other folks. Okay, let's try it again. Hello. I am so sorry. This is <sighs> I put myself in a good situation <laughs> service wise. I know. I it's not about. your fault. I know it's not your fault. These things happen. Trust me, it does happen once in a while. It's the modern technology, you know what I'm saying? Because if we were in front of each other it wouldn't be an issue. You know, but go ahead. That's correct. So we want to talk about a new day, where that came from and then your decision yeah. in terms of Shane, because I think that's amazing. Um, that I just felt, you know, I, that happens often, like where if, if I have a song lying around, like there's another, um, organization, uh, actually an, an internet site called blowupradio.com that, um, continuously will, you know, um, you know, reach out probably annually, I would say about a, a, a fundraiser, or, um, honestly, no matter what the cause is, unless it's something that's like, you know, like goat cheese awareness or something completely ridiculous. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't, I would I just have a hard time, you know, not doing that. That's what, to me, that's sure. what music, you know, just because it's something that is your business doesn't mean, you know, you should, um, 
the way when you listen to music, the way it makes you feel. I mean, we all listen to music based on our moods. I mean, why? What's the harm in in just donating that? I mean, you're not the right. song's already written. You know, it's not like you're it's not like you're going. You know, you're like you know walking on coal here to to do it. So I find it a very simple right. thing to to do. To be honest with you, um, the song itself, um, man, that was written so long ago. I, I that was one of those songs though. I would say. I don't recall. Um, it's not one that I often. I don't. I don't even have a recording of that anymore, to be honest. It's not one that I often play. Oh, um, oh my god! That was one okay. of those, Yeah, it was a long time ago, and that's that's one of those songs though, that was kind of um, based on and you know waiting for inspiration. Um, but I, I wish I could. I wish I could put my finger on exactly what that what the topic was. It's very vague in general. Okay. Um, okay. Gotcha. But. That's all right. No bad answer there. I just thought, well, I'll ask because, you know, sometimes you have those songs, you know, just like I have those pieces where I'm like, I know exactly what I wanted to say, why I wrote it this way, that kind of good stuff. You know what I mean? But that's fine. You know, I mean, I didn't realize it was a significant amount of time ago, but that's okay. I will yeah, mention that's one that, of those, those songs where, you know, I'm sure you do this with your work too, where you, you look back and even if a year ago, because you're always trying to develop, you, it's like you think of uh, some about something about it was cringeworthy, whether it's the voice <laughs> or, you know. <laughs> There's just something about it. It's just, it's just like unlistenable. Sure. No, I get it. I do. I totally get it. Now, um, when I was listening to the turnaround, one of the things that I thought about, I could be completely off here, is I was thinking to myself, I wonder if he is thinking about um, a change, period, meaning that, okay, I, I've reached this point in one relationship I have, whether it was your wife or with somebody you knew or whatever have you. Um, and I was just thinking to myself, she doesn't know so yet. apropos in that. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh. Once it's released is when I'm when, when I'm just gonna divorce. That's it. <laughs> uh, that's a joke. That's a joke. I know um, that, but that's what I. That's the kind of the sense I got. You know, kind of like I was thinking, is that yeah. his mindset when he was writing this song? You know what I'm saying, though. Yes. So that was actually that one was uh, was something that I had a bunch of like um, again like storyboards kind of lying around for this. Um, right. Melodically, I, I I liked the way it felt and rhythmically. Um, but one of my closest friends, um, he was having a, he had some anxiety about. He um, he he's he's in his forties and he okay. stopped going to school about a decade ago, and he, he literally had one class left to get his degree. He's been unhappy with his career choices ever since. So we had a conversation. I'm like, just ask them if you could just finish. I mean, chances are they're going to say no. You've got because they won't transfer over. He asked, they let him finish. He just took the one course and, you know, he got off his ass and <laughs> he's got a degree and he's a much happier guy. So it's a simple story. And awesome. There's nothing, you know, I wish I could give you something more epic about it, but. No, um, not really, at all. That's what fact. drove it. That's awesome. And sometimes the best songs come from something that that is that simplistic or from one tiny little story or one little moment. It is basically a collection of a bunch of little moments that come together. And that makes a beautiful song to me. Just my thought on that one. Yeah, but but the trick you. is to, to write something, you know, if whatever story you had in your mind, to write something that's kind of vague enough to make it relatable to other people. You don't want to pigeonhole yourself to like everyone oh, right. else who waited a decade to go to school. <laughs> You betcha. So, oh, I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. I gotcha, without a doubt. And on that same caveat, as we were talking about the one, I also know that you participated in Jersey City, the um, the Hope Shrines House concert. Now, how'd you get involved with that? Um, event? Oh, that was cool. So that I mentioned my um, the, my friend and collaborator Nicola. So she is friends with a gentleman named Michael Strom, um, and he is involved with the organization uh, with Hope Shrines. I believe that was the name of the organization as well. Um, yeah. And that was such a cool house concert. Um, it was like, it was an art gallery uh, in Jersey city. Um, so really cool, intimate, uh, great people. So I, that those, if I had to pick, you know, like a, if I could, if I got to pick the gigs that I would do on a nightly basis, it would be things like that, that are in someone's living room, Aww. acoustic guitars, um, conversational storytelling. Those are fun. Oh, awesome. That's absolutely awesome. I do. I like the idea of that, as a matter of fact. And one thing I was going to mention to you, or should I say mention to you and Bridget both, is you're the type of musician that I could picture at a film festival. Because I do a lot of the film festival things, um, and I attend a lot of them. And sometimes mm -hmm. they'll actually have music on opening night and things like that. And, I, and you just seemed a perfect fit for that. Maybe I'm crazy. Oh, thank you. 
I, I would not. I would certainly not turn away from that. It's, it's um, the, the TV and film market. Honestly, is kind of what, where my where my head is at right now. In really? Terms of planning and yeah. So I, I think I could I could see that making perfect sense. Making it happen. We need to do something like yeah. that. And God knows. Kudos to you. You played a wine bar. That's like dining going to heaven for me. And I didn't get an invite, um, by the oh, way, but yeah. that's okay. You and me both, my But friend. I'm like, oh, my God, wine bar died, went to heaven. I'm like, that yeah. must be a place that you get well-received at, you know what I mean, because of the type and the style of music that you do. So I want to ask you something, because I don't normally get to ask musicians this. So go outside of your realm and tell me one place that you'd be, like, completely uncomfortable with doing, but you might want to try playing, just to see if you can do um, it. I mean, I, I could probably tell you some of the uncomfortable places that I have played. <laughs> um, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, gigging so much. I mean, you you just got to kind of roll with it and try and be a pro and say, this kind of sucks, but you know, um, I got to get through it. Uh, so uh, uncomfortable. I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, you, you know, I think it's more genre specific. Um Meaning. So for me, like, I'm always uncomfortable when, you know, if I'm playing, um, playing like some type of, whether it's a benefit, and there's all types of eclectic, you know, sounds going on. And the band preceding me is like, you know, like kick ass, double bass pedal. I just really, like, in my head, I'm like, this is going <laughs> to suck. This is going to be really hard uh, to win over a crowd that's like, you know, ready to like, that's just like slamming it into each other and starting fires and stuff. Um, I am not the good predecessor for that. Um, okay. I know, I know my, you know, my, my forum, so to speak. I know I'm, but the wine bars are awesome. Like you had said. Uh, well, definitely like, without uh, a doubt. I mean, it's like a good, yeah. Uh, wine, coffee, even like a bookstore. You know what I mean? I know that might sound yeah. a little out of realm, but is it though? Yeah. You know, cause it's New York city, you know, just my thoughts. But yeah, I'm not the Bar- Barnes and Noble, I think, just run up host a good amount right? of musicians there. Yeah, they do, don't they? And I wonder, do some of the private bookstores do those things there? I'm just curious. I, I think those. It would be hard to do. I I had a I, I knew someone that did a Barnes and Noble tour, which is a really cool idea. Which I can imagine you actually, Neat. you know, having enough funding to to get from stop to stop because I think it was a natural right? thing. Um, but okay. the private ones, I'm not quite sure if you can make that happen, but it would be cool to do kind of, you know, uh, one offs or maybe like a monthly thing, a residency or something like that. That can work. I hear you. Oh, definitely. Um, but I agree. I think like the bucket list gigs, like, like I had alluded to before, are house concerts. They're, right. I, I don't know if, if, if where you are, they're as prevalent as they are here, um, well, but they are really kind of, hard to get into. Really? There's, they're, they're, um, they're awesome for the artist because you're literally showing up and you don't invite people because it's someone else's house, but there's agents that specialize in living room concerts, house concerts. Um, they're very expensive. They're hard to get. And it's the same, you know, like kind of big name solo acoustic artists that just go sit on the couch and play for people unplugged. And then they crash on your couch and leave in the morning. So (laughs) it's a very cool concept. I can't even believe that. I mean, I'm trying to vision this in my head because I have parties here at my house all the time. I would absolutely love that, but I'm blessed already. I mean, all my musicians just come on my show. I'm like, play for me, sing for me, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? And now the cool part is I'm making a movie. So now that I'm doing movies, I can use all my musician friends. So I'm always taking people I've interviewed and and, and become friends with. And I say, hey, did that. I'm working on a a hundred word film festival thing right now. And I'm like, I'm using 15 of my musician friends. I'm like, that's like the biggest awesome. promotion I think there is out there. What I'm a huge proponent for, people like you need people like us to spread the word. And and my show is great because it's got lots of great numbers and listeners, but they remember you then. When you, when you get into film, when you get into a moment where somebody is viewing something and they hear this and they get touched by the sound of it, that's great promotion. you know. And I think that nowadays yeah. you guys need as much help as you can get. Not because you're not talented, but because there's so many of you and, and you need to stand out, you work so hard. And as you said, people don't realize the amount of money and time and effort you put in to play for maybe three or four or five people. And that's devotion. You're right. And that's passion. That's huge. You're you know right. what I'm saying? And but there you go. Being a musician or, or saying, hey, I think I've got the talent to do this is just not enough. I think you could probably say with any art, you've, you've got to, you know, it's, it's very much about marketing. Um, so if I you agree. don't have the marketing, no matter how good your product is, where's it going? Exactly. 
And that's just it. That's the sad part. And I'm like, oh, my God, I feel so bad for all these guys because they're trying so hard. You know in their hearts this is the number one thing they want to do. This is exactly why I put so many musicians on my show or actors on my show or people that are in the arts that need that because it's important to keep it alive and to give people as many chances as you can. Just my thought on that. Yes. Now, well, I, I have I to ask you. I appreciate the community of musicians. I appreciate it. Aww. I'm going to actually Facebook that today because I don't hear that that often. I mean, <laughs> I know that every one of them adores me, but that's so sweet. Thank you. Now, I have to ask you, if you've ever been on Matt's page, he has like 8,000 pictures. They're taking all these really cool poses of you, which is awesome. I want to know, is it the same photographer? Because they're really good poses. Really, honestly. Um, I've got a, so I, I've got a great circuit of family and friends that are photographers. So my stepfather is a photographer. Nice. He does a great job. Um, my, um, my friend, uh, Jen Brino photography, um, she does okay. a lot of them. Um, so I, and a lot of them too have been from, you know, from, uh, reviews that, you know, people that have come right. to review a gig will come out and take pictures. Um, so yeah, uh, but I, I am lucky Neat. to have a good network of people that are going to be at the show anyway. So they're like, why don't I just take exactly. pictures? Exactly. It, that's exactly right. It works out very well. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you a few things about this gentleman on my phone here that is a testament, of course, as to the fact that the community loves him because he's had some really cool things happen. For instance, I know that you were Artist of the Month back in 2008, and that was from yes. WTBQ. Second of all, he's been featured on Fuge, Fuse television. I know that you've shared a bill with just some infamous names, but the one that stood out most to me, and I have to ask if you got to meet him, is Frankie Valley. Oh my God. I'm like, oh my God. What up with that? I had, to tell you the truth, I had no freaking clue that that was going to happen. Um, it was really cool. Really? I, and yeah, me, it, for me too, I, I, you know, I didn't know much about the Four Seasons too, so I didn't really think it was a a uh, big deal either. So I, I was playing at this, you know, um, this local fair um, that was just outside of a bar that I would always play at. I had a good relationship with the owners, and they said, can you come play outside our place for an hour? Um, and, you know, I show up, and I'm like, who's this guy, you know, holding like a – it looks like a karaoke speaker and just kind of singing <laughs> to a backing track. I'm like, he, he sounds pretty good, but I'm like, why are there so many people there? Um and then I, you know, there he was. He was just, uh, you know, oh open to the God. public, and yeah, couldn't have, couldn't have been a, a nicer guy. And he sounded, really? he was older, and he, and he, and he, yeah, he sounded awesome. He sounded really, really good. Um, so that was kind of like one of these. Oh, cool! That happened. <laughs> Unplanned. Had well, no idea. And you know, of course, him. And and I'm gonna guess because you're in New York. And isn't it playing right now, Jersey Boys? Isn't that playing right now? It's got a run going in New I don't York know now. If it's still, it should. I mean, it's huge. It's it's such a, a popular show. It is actually. You're right. It is still. It is still running because I had a friend uh, tell me about it again the other day. We've seen it a bunch of times, but um, I haven't seen it myself. But apparently, fantastic. Uh, I was fantastic just going to ask show. you about that. Yeah. I mean, I did. I haven't but, seen the show, but I saw the movie. The movie was great. I mean, it's really good. That family, though, the Bobby Valley, Frankie Valley, they're legends in New Jersey. So I get for me oh, looking exactly. in retrospect, it made sense that they were pl- that that Frankie was there. Um, of course. Given that, it's like in the heart of New Jersey. I just think that's so exciting. We're like, oh, my gosh, obviously. And um, the other thing is I wanted to talk about. Now, I know that it's been indicated, and I just want to clarify. Obviously, some of the deals that you made, like Dovetail Strings, for instance, and all their mm-hmm. audio, and then Stormbridge and, and Furch. Are you working actively with all of them right now or um, one of them? Or talk a little bit about um, why it's so significant that you're working with people such as this, besides the music component, the, obviously. Sure. The two most active uh, relationships right now are uh, Stonebridge, Furch Guitar, which ultimately the same company. Stonebridge is um, – is a distributor of Furch guitars based in Czech Republic, and they make amazing, amazing okay. guitars. They, you know, they are so supportive of their artists, um, and they, I mean, the instrument that I have from them is just amazing, and that's that's what I featured on the Turnaround. That's one of the acoustic guitars. Really? Um, okay. So, yeah, so I, I do have a, a, a very active relationship with them in terms of promotions. They, they cross-promote very well. Um, and then again, I do everything I can to use their, you know, their product. I mean, what I've learned very quickly is it's like, it's, you know, if, to, if you're going to accept the endorsement, you better really love the product. Otherwise it's not fair to, to the other party. 
Um, of course. So they're great. Uh, All Claire Audio, um, that's another great company that's in, that just really wants the artist to succeed. Um, so I use their in-ear monitors, again, which I used for this, this latest single. Um, but, you know, all of them really, they, they promote the heck out of you. They, um, they're always waiting for new music. They will, um, you know, they'll just check in and say, hey, here's, here's some new T-shirts for you that we just got in, things like that that are really cool. Um, nice. And then you know, the other relationships, I, I haven't, to tell you the truth, I, I've, microphones are tricky. So one of them, Lampifier Microphones, is a really great company. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but your voice is such a specific, you know, uh, finicky instrument that you've, once you find, like, a, a mic that works, it's like a lifetime thing. So um, they've oh, been bad. awesome with me. I, I, I haven't, you know, it is an awesome mic. I don't use it much. I've got a, like a main, um, a main microphone that I just have a hard time letting go of at this point. Um, and dust <laughs> strings I do okay. use very, uh, very frequently. Um, and they're great as well. It's a smaller company. Um, but you know, all, I think all of these, these companies see themselves as artists as well. So I think that's why it works sure. like yourself. You're sure. an artist. So you, regardless of whether you're making music or making things. that type of gear. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, well, that's just good. Exactly. And you have your specialty items. And sometimes people would be surprised because it's weird because I don't know if you do this. I'm a huge Marilyn Monroe fan. So if I could supply my house full of notebooks with her face on it, I mean, I would write in nothing but that. You know what I'm talking about? I have my sure. special pens and things like that. But, you know, we all have our specialized sort of things, obviously. And I just think it's so neat that when musicians get to be able to work with some of the companies that they like and the product that they're so, you know, they're so fond of, that's a big deal. You know, and, and that means that they're outwardly supporting you, which is big too. Well, I think that's a big part of going back to like why it's so hard to make a living making art now. I think that that's a part of it too. Is you, you know, when I'm looking at it now, I spent so much money on gear um, back when I, you know, when I wasn't good about keeping books and all this thing, this stuff too. And, right. Um, <laughs> you try, you almost like think that there's a separation between the two just based on principle. No, I can't do that. This is art in some idiotic manner. Um, but now you look at it, you're like, wow, this is how you save money on these things. You've got a product that you love. You're working with really nice people that are going to help you. You're getting, you know, every gig you play has their logo out there. It works for them too. Um, right. And yeah, and you, and you cut costs on all of your expenses. So I, I think, you know, and it's anything too for listening to, um, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> I didn't ask a lot about it. Well, how did you find a plan? I just found some products that I liked and reached out and said, hey, what has to do work with me? And I'm like, oh, wow. So, um, gotcha. I said, oh, that's, you know, that's going to make me work with a lot of these companies. Oh, my gosh. I have to interject once again and say that I've lost you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, folks. Now, this time, his call got dropped on accident. Hopefully, when he calls back in here, we just have a few more questions left for him. Um, And, of course, we'll be playing his new song, which, as he has mentioned, is called The Turnaround. You're absolutely going to love it. It's a little under three minutes long, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's just the sound of his guitar, the sound of his voice. I, I just I can't say enough about it. And that's not because he's on my show, but because I've listened to it repeatedly, and I can tell you. It's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful song. Um, Here he comes. Just one second. Hi Matt. I blame I blame AT and T for all of this. I, I'm so I'm sorry. So I'm blaming them. all of this. So I've so got blaming. about five so minutes blaming. before I've got to um, I've got to get to work actually. No, as a matter of fact, I was just telling the audience I only have two more questions for you. Um, one of which is uh, just to cite some of the places that you had talked about. You played pianos. You played Liberty House. Um, I thought it was cool that you played La Festa Italiana. So I was curious to see um, if that was more of an interesting gig for you because it's at a festival versus you know, going to a tavern, et cetera. What's that like? That was so freaking cool. It was a trio. So I, I've, I've grown a really, you know, playing solo gigs too, you, you know, they're, they're really exhausting. Um, they're rewarding, but they're really tiring. And there's just something fun about like, um, you know, just playing music with your friends. So it was a, it was a trio sure. that I put together with a, uh, with a drummer and another guitar player. And the atmosphere was incredible. The place was packed. The whole block, it looked like Little Italy on a really busy night. Um, it, is so it was neat. hot as hell. Yeah, but people <laughs> really just wanted to hear music, um, and it was awesome. We had a you know the little girl that um, you know came up to the stage and she's she asked if she could she could sing um, 
I don't remember exactly what song it was, but I thought it was really cool. And we just, her dad picks her up, puts her on the stage. Go ahead, go for it. Acapella. Girl had, you know, some, some serious guts to do that. Uh, and she got great support. Um, it was just, a, it was an awesome crowd, an awesome night amidst the heat. Um, That's I, I was pretty Those are so neat. That. Yeah. Neat. Very yeah. neat. So note there, he should be doing more festivals too. See, we're, we're getting you know, a whole different career here. We're going to have all these opportunities. I know. I'll so take excited. it. Exactly. Now, because I know you're short on time, I'm going to go through this list um, just to make sure that uh, since you're on the phone, so we can clarify all the different places that people can find you. And then once you go off air, I'm going to play your song, of course, because I know that you don't have any more time, which is fine because I have a little more time than you. Um, Just to let everybody know, Matt is on Facebook. Obviously, his personal page, his last name is spelled C-O-L-L-I-G-A-N. He also has one for his music, which is Matt Colligan Music, and that's on Facebook. The website itself, Matt and again, it's C O L L I G A N music.com is the website. He's on Twitter, and his handle is at Matt Colligan. His music can be heard on YouTube, Reverb Nation, found on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, and he's also on Google. Are there any other places or anything I've missed? No, I think you hit the nail on the head, so thank you. Oh, my gosh. You're quite welcome, actually. Now, because I'm going to be playing your song, The Turnaround, um, is there anything we haven't talked about in reference to or something that you want the fans to know about this song in particular? Um, they can get it now, when they can get it now, obviously some of the places we mentioned and such. Just anything at all about the song, since I'll be playing it. I can't um, wait. Sure. Thank you for that. They, so there will be a video, an actual, uh, I've released a, 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 a lyric video, excuse me, on Monday. Okay. You can find that on my YouTube channel, which is Matt Colligan Music nice. as well. Um, okay. And as of next week, I will release the official video for that. Um, and then I will all also ask that you stay tuned over the next, it's going to be about a mo- every month and a half schedule, I'm going to be releasing a new single. Um, I'm doing all the recording nice. and production here at home. Um, and I figured that's, you know, now with the, with the model being that it's much harder to sell an album um, because people typically flock to one song anyhow, that I thought it'd be more fun maybe to, to just do one song at a time and, have some conversation about it and then move on to the next. Um, Definitely. So that's it. That's awesome. And the last thing before I let you go um, is to find out from you upcoming gigs, because I will be in New York city next week and I will be disappointed if I can't come see you. Oh, awesome. So, yes. So I have, I'm sorry. I should be prepared. I'm going to look at my calendar. I will be at. I'm piano sorry, but that's today. important. Okay. Yeah. I will be at oh. um, a piano again next week. Uh, not next week, next month, September. Uh, I will get you that date now. But that will be with um, with Connell Cruz, who is a singer-songwriter from South Africa who was nominated for Artist of the Year in South Africa. Um, nice. Yeah, fantastic singer-songwriter. Um, it's a free okay. show. There's no cover. It's a great cool. venue. But that's September 21st, and it uh, it starts at 7 o'clock. Got it. Okay. Are you playing it all this month yet, obviously? Because um, – I'll be there the 25th to the 28th. Uh, in New Jersey, I will be the 25th to the 28th. I, I do get a lot of gigs that kind of, you know, I get called last minute for a lot of them. So I have, yeah, so oh. I'll be playing it in Warren, New Jersey on the 25th at, um, at a venue called Stone House at Sterling Ridge. That's 7 p.m. Okay. Um, Got it. And then, yeah, that, within that time frame, that's it. Got it. Okay, just wanted to double check. Awesome. I will let you get off to work. I will go ahead and I will play your song and take care of the rest of the show, but I have to say it was a privilege, truly a privilege, and I cannot wait to meet you in person. Thank you. Cindy, thank you so much for having me, and thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you. At any time, dear. You have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. You as well. Thank you. Wasn't he amazing? Matt Colligan. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to spend the next two minutes and 45 seconds, and this is the song, The Turnaround. Maybe the turnaround by the soul in your sneakers now. Just maybe the turnaround. Through the windows you open wide. Over the bridge of your
Is that not a cool song or what, folks? Thank you so much. Want to do one more time around? Matt Colligan is his name, www.mattcolliganmusic.com. He also has a Facebook page, of course, his own name, Matt Colligan, as well as Matt Colligan Music. Twitter handle is at Matt Colligan. He's on YouTube, Reverb Nation, iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, and, of course, on Google+. Don't want to forget, as he mentioned, September 21st at 7 o'clock, he'll be playing at Pianos, and, of course, out in Sterling Ridge at the Stone House, and that's on, of course, August 25th. Once again, huge thank you to Matt Colligan for his time. So very sorry that we had the technical difficulties there. It was unfortunate. Also, and as always, Bridget O'Brien from Bridget O'Brien PR and Events. Without you, I would not have some of the best guests in New York City. I cannot thank you enough. I love you. I miss you. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much again. want to remind everybody tomorrow, 10 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time, I will be at a just undisclosed location statewide, but I still will be on the radio. Very, very lucky to be hosting one of the top wigs at Starkist Tuna. We're not only going to have a wonderful and insightful and um, lengthy interview, but we're also going to be giving away some free stuff, so I can't wait. 10 o'clock Central Standard Time tomorrow. You guys have yourself a wonderful day. I'm headed off to the chiropractor and pray like hell that it's good news. So we'll talk to you folks tomorrow. Have a good day. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.